Good morning. Buen día. I'm Kevin Hurley, the director of the Yo soy el director de la Casa de Damascus. Gospel Center in Alcohol Recovery Ministry for Men. As a veteran of the United States Navy, it is my honor to welcome you to church this morning. Today, as we celebrate the 245th birthday of our nation's freedom, we also Hoy festejamos el aniversario 245 de la libertad de nuestro país. God, y estamos eh, agradecidos al buen Dios para darnos libertad de los vicios. Before the service begins, I wanted to share a few things with you. First, you may have noticed that each Sunday, the team of people are at the front of the room at the conclusion of each of our worship services. Queremos avisarles que cada domingo, eh, cada domingo hay un grupo de gente acá en el altar. Caso que usted quiera orar or con ellos y también es la oración es disponible. Si usted está, si está luchando con algunas adicciones. Otra, la, otra cosa es que en julio 9 a las 5 y media, la gente soltera entre 25 y 35 años profesionales pueden reunirse en la playa del Moquetillo para, para eh, prender un fuego y comer s'mores y so disfrutar un rato juntos. Estamos tan contentos de disfrutar y alabar con ustedes esta mañana. What's up, church? Happy 4th of July. We're glad to see you in here, or if you're tuning in online, yeah. <laughs> Feliz julio, el 4 de julio. Ustedes a lo mejor vinieron esperando que el servicio sea referido al 4 de julio. Nosotros no hablamos acerca de la bandera, pero hablamos de la cruz de Jesús. Y las libertades que tenemos en nuestro país acá son maravillosas, maravillosas, pero estamos adorando por la libertad que tenemos en Jesús, en Cristo Jesús. La la eh, vida y la resurrección de Jesús. Vamos a orar. Te agradezco, Señor, por lo que tú eres y cómo tú nos amas y por la libertad que tenemos en ti. Éramos esclavos y ahora estamos libres y todo por ti. Señor, en tu, oramos en tu nombre hermoso. Amén. Cante con nosotros, conmigo estas canciones. Yo estaba en... Yo estaba enterrado en mis vergüenzas. ¿Quién podría llevar esa clase de peso? Era mi tumba hasta que te encontré a ti. Yo estaba respirando, pero no estaba vivo. Y traté de esconder todas mis fallas. Va hasta que te conocí a ti. Tú me llamaste por mi nombre y yo salí de, corriendo de esa tumba. Salí de la oscuridad y a tu día glorioso. Tú me llamaste por mi nombre y yo salí de esa tumba. Fuera de la oscuridad y a tu día glorioso. His mercy has saved us. Come on. Now you know. Tu misericordia salvó mi alma. Ahora tu libertad es todo lo que conozco. Lo viejo fue hecho nuevo, Jesús, cuando te conocí a ti.
Cuando éramos antes y ahora somos diferentes, porque tenemos a Jesús. Precisaba rescate y mi pecado era pesado. Las cadenas se rompieron. Cuando vino tu gloria, yo precisaba una casa y tú me llamaste un ciudadano del cielo. Cuando estaba roto, tú me diste sal, sanidad y tu amor en el aire es lo que estamos, lo que estoy respirando. Tengo un futuro mismo porque cuando me llamaste por mi nombre yo salí de la tumba fuera de la oscuridad y a tu día glorioso Oh 
pecado nada solo la sangre de Jesús ¿qué me puede hacer santo de nuevo? nada pero la sangre de Jesús el caudal es precioso que me hace blanco como la nieve no conozco otra fuente nada solo pero la sangre de Jesús Church, please be seated. Iglesia, tomar If this is your first time, si es tu vez acá, welcome to Canyon Hills Community Bienvenidos Church a la Iglesia Canyon Hill. and our communion service. En nuestro servicio de Today, Santa when we remember Cena, and celebrate the physical freedoms and liberties al, our ancestors fought and for, the cross of de, Jesus Christ de país, is the greatest Jesús demonstration of God's love to humanity de amor to set a la us free from the bondage of sin, del shame, and guilt. The Bible tells us that the wages of sin is death, Las, but the gift of God la is eternal life in Christ Jesus. Eterna, Dios, God gives every generation an opportunity to look back at his promise de and hope to look forward to it. And communion is a time where we que come together as one family, as redeemed children of God, to do just that. Y le pedimos a Jesús que haga así. In the Garden of Eden, en el jardín de Eden, man, antes de la caída del Adam hombre, Adán y Eva tenían una buena relación con day. Dios cada día. And clothed in the righteousness Estaban vestidos en la justicia de Dios. Pero cuando pecaron y desobedieron, la justicia de Dios los dejó. Sin and righteousness cannot coexist. El pecado y and la so the justicia no pueden co coexistir. Naked. Entonces estaban, se encontraron enfermos, eh, so desnudos, física y mentalmente. 
entonces cosieron hojas de higo para cubrirse But then you right away that it wasn't good enough. No supieron que no era suficiente. Righteousness that God had clothed them with. Que la justicia so con lo que Dios lo había vestido solo viene de Sometimes Dios. We do that too. Y a veces hacemos lo mismo. We try to earn our righteousness through Queremos our own ganar nuestra justicia con hojas de higos. Fig leaves. Y con cosas But the love of God and the righteousness of God, judgment of God is so beautifully demonstrated in the garden to Adam and Eve and to all of us. The Bible says that God made them garments Dios of skin. Los hizo, Dios les hizo church. ropas de piel, de lamb cuero. Had to be slain to y take una their place oveja tuvo death. que ser to cover their sin, shame, and nakedness. Para tener the wages la of sin is death. Y la the paga gift de pecado of God es eternal life y el es in Christ Jesus. Que no es la vida eterna en God Jesus. promised them that he will send a Savior. Then Salvador. later on God chooses Abraham, Entonces, father Dios of many nations, Abraham, both physically and spiritually, and says through you I will bless all ti, nations of the earth. Abraham, we know, is a y friend Abraham, of God. And so God Dios. reveals his heart to Abraham, y Dios le dio, father of many nations. Dios le dio el corazón para and, and he says, hacer you know the story where Isaac was Pero asked to be sacrificed. Story ended. Isaac. But there is a beautiful uh, picture that emerges there where Isaac asks his father, Abraham, Father, we have the word, we have the fire, Abraham where is the land? And Abraham has a beautiful answer, but the Lord himself will provide. Isaiah 53 talks about this lamb and the cost of it. We all like sheep have gone away, each of us have turned our, to our own ways, and the Lord had laid on him the iniquity of us all. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds he did it. John the Baptist sees Jesus walking towards him, and he says, Behold, The Lamb of God who takes away the Dios sins of the whole world. The Bible says, for the joy that was set before him, Jesus endured Jesus the cross. Sufrió la cruz. You and me, Usted y we yo. are his joy. Nosotros so somos he endured it. Alegría. Su you know, see the Old Testament sacrifices. El testame, el Scripture says that those are an annual reminder of sin. It is impossible una, for the blood of bulls and goats pecado, to take away sins. Therefore, when Christ came into the world, he pecado, said, sacrifices Jesús, and offerings you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me. The burnt offerings mí, and sin offerings, you were not pleased. Las Then I said, de, here de, I am, de it is written about me in the scroll. Pecado, no eran I no have eran come to do your will, my God. Y tenía que venir Church, Jesús a este mundo. prepare your hearts. Scripture warns us not to take part in the Lord's table in an para, unworthy manner. Para no tomar, so let's take a few moments eh, to examine our hearts eh, to get right with God. No merecedora. Y vamos a tomar unos minutos y ponernos eh, bien con Dios. Confess your sins. Confiesa sus pecados. And return so that he can clothe you with his Para que él no pueda cubrir con su justicia. If you had not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, si usted no ha aceptado a Jesús como su Salvador personal, arms that received the entire punishment, the wrath of God for sin, stands as an invitation for you to turn to him, to call on his name, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him he might become the righteousness of God. Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Church, let's eat the bread. In the same manner, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. 
eh, George, es una nueva ley con ustedes. The scripture says there's no other name under heaven given to man by which we must, we must be saved but by the name of Jesus Christ. Because the price has been paid. Father God, thank you for your son Jesus Christ. Thank you for relentlessly loving us and pursuing us with your love. Jesus, thank you for the cross your death, your burial, and the resurrection for our sins. Holy Spirit, thank you for being with us, in us every day, reminding us of this sacrifice, what it cost God to save us, and drawing us close to him every day. In your precious name I pray. Amen.
forever. Sí, Dios, tú reinas por siempre. Eres el Rey de Reyes, el Señor de Señor that you paid that we would be free y adoramos el precio que tú has pagado para que tengamos libertad Lord would we not take that love and that que no tomemos este amor that change us from the inside out que nos que, livianamente que nos Lord, ha cambiado de adentro hacia afuera en el nombre de Jesús amén hmm. I hope you feel that your heart is better prepared Espero now to está, hear from God and his word. I'm going to ask you to open to Daniel chapter 12. Que vamos a abrir la a Daniel 12. And while you're doing that, hacen eso, let me just kind of pivot for a moment. If you were momento, with us last Sunday, si usted con nosotros you'll el remember el that pasado, we prayed for a woman in our church named Susie Dish. Susie's been Susie a part Dish of our church, her, her husband, and whole family. And um, for 20 years now, she's been on our staff for about 12 years. And, uh, most of you know her as la, the director of our conocen. community food bank. She Están, also oversees our benevolence ministry as well as comidas. being a part of the biblical counseling department of our church. Uh, Susie's in dire straits. Eh, uh, she's been on a ventilator for 11 malos. days. She's been in induced coma. And as of last inducido. night, she is very, very critical. Y, eh, so, a partir de, de uh, I know she's la noche dear to a lot of you. Some of you muy, are new enough. You don't know who I'm talking about. Uh, but God understands that. And I, I just want to call us to prayer for her and her family. If you just bow your heads with me and would you just take a moment and just together, just silently between you and God, would you just ask God for a miracle for Susie? pedir a Dios por un milagro. Heavenly Father, our heads are bowed nuestras cabezas inclinadas in confidence en and comfort that no one, none of us, will remain on this earth one day less than you have ordained for us to be. And so, God, we know that before Susie was ever born, you determined how many of those days would be. And yet, God, we don't know that. We don't know the number. And so we come to you by faith, knowing, God, that many don't have because they don't ask. And so we ask you for a miracle. We ask you to intervene, God. We know you love Susie. We know Susie loves you. And so we ask God for grace and mercy that you would do a miracle for her. And that, God, you would allow us and her husband, Jim, and her family to enjoy her here for more days. Podemos disfrutar, que podamos disfrutarla y tenerla ella en nuestro medio unos días más, un tiempo más. Lord, we know, though, if you take her to be home, she would never want to come back. And so we trust you with your will, we trust you with your way, because we know you are always good. And you are always right. So, Lord, we hand her to you and we lay her in your lap. And we trust you, God, that you've heard our cries on her behalf. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you for doing that. Uh, we've had so many people today asking us how she's doing and just ask you to keep praying for Susie. We'll let you know when anything changes. You've opened your Bibles now to Daniel chapter 12. That's because we've been going through this Old Testament book now, uh, verse by verse, chapter by chapter, and we come to the final chapter. And by way of ramping up to chapter 12, let me just remind us that last Sunday, we saw uh, the, the prophet Daniel receive a fourth and final vision from God when he was standing by the Tigris River. That was chapter 11. Eso fue el he saw an angelic figure figura it, it looked, un that looked like a man lino, clothed in linen and this angelic en figure aire, in this vision that God gave Daniel to see. He, this, this angel was kind of elevated Él above the waters este of the river. 
por encima del río. And if you took my encouragement last si week to read chapter 11 at home, you would have seen that God sent this angel to prophesy in unusual detail the, the future wars and battles that would be fought between the kings of the south and the kings of the north. Entre entre the south being the south being Syria, or the north being Syria, the Syria, and the south being Egypt. 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 The south being Syria, or the north being Syria, and the south being Egypt. For centuries after Daniel would die and go to heaven, there were going to be all these wars on earth, and for centuries, God's people in Israel would be caught in the middle. And in verse 21 of verse 11, or chapter 11 of Daniel, the angel calls the last king of this, all these wars that were going on for centuries, the angel calls the last king of the north a contemptible person. And that word contemptible in Hebrew, it's a heavy word. It means despicable or deserving of hatred. That's how bad this last king of the north is going to be. He would desecrate the temple of Jerusalem and he would severely persecute the Jewish people. Now, history has revealed to us from our vantage point that this contemptible, despicable king was actually Antiochus IV of Syria. And so it happened just like the angel is telling Daniel in chapter 11, 400 years after Daniel's death. But by the end of chapter 11, the angel shifts the prophecy from the time of Antiochus to, quote, the time of the end. It's like the angel gave Daniel a glimpse of the immediate future, and then he shifts to the distant future in this vision. And that distant future would go to the time right before Jesus would return, the second coming of Jesus. The angel is describing at the end of chapter 11, this final war that will take place in human history. And the leader of the world, the world leader then, would be a very powerful and evil person, deceiving the whole world to turn against and war against God's people and even try to annihilate the church from the face of the earth. It's going to be a terrible time of suffering for God's people worldwide. But the bigger point is that God already knows everything. God already knows what's going to happen, and he already knows exactly how it's going to happen. And that is supposed to be a source of our comfort, that the, that the world is not out of God's control, that God already knows the future, he sees it, he's already there, and God is using all of human history to accomplish his own purpose and plan. Now, for 14 messages through Por the book of Daniel so far, it's not been, been my intention to try and no unravel fue, all the mysteries no of this incredibly de, prophetic de book. Todos los Every Bible student, any, any serious Bible student, has to concede that this book of Daniel is intended to reveal Daniel future events using prophecies that are filled with symbolism, llen, symbolism llen that's been very symbolos. difficult to interpret at times. And if you've been with us over the last three months, you absolutely understand that some of the vision that God has allowed Daniel to see is not easy for us to understand, nor was it easy for Daniel to understand. But instead, in trying to figure it all out to the minutest detail, my hope all along has been not to enter into more debate on the dimly lit details, but to reveal the clear gospel truths in Daniel that actually unite us and encourage us to remain faithful to God all the way to the end. That's what we've been doing for the last several months, uniting ourselves around the clear gospel truths in this wonderful book of prophecies. Now, I want to give you the main idea of chapter 12. Les you could sum it up in one la, sentence. It's actually the same main theme of the whole book of Daniel that I shared with you 14 del, Sundays ago. Del, del, It's kind of come full circle los, now to the end. And here's the main idea of chapter 14. 12. Simply, God promises everlasting life to his people who persevere faithful And the truth is that many of God's people get discouraged and will get discouraged as 
y no perseveran en tiempos de persecución y el sufrimiento resultando de esto. No quieren perseguir no quieren continuar en la vida de persecución. Y ciertamente estamos viendo esto en nuestra cultura a medida que observamos el aumento de los medios de comunicación, el odio y la persecución políticamente patrocinados contra la iglesia. Y las iglesias están abandonando la escritura y la fe en Cristo Jesús. Los pastores están dejando el ministerio y muchas denominaciones están abandonando a las presiones de la persecución pública. Y respecto a esta persecución, Jesús mismo predijo en Mateo 24 que el pecado va a ser cold. Por, and we certainly are seeing lados, sin becoming more and more rampant. Se van a enfriar. And my hope is that we'll be encouraged y mi es que to never allow our love no for God or our love for each other Dios or our love for our neighbors to grow cold. And that we'll faithfully persevere all final. the way to the end. For then it is that vida. God will give Eterno. us eternal life. And so if you're there now, ready with chapter 12, let's stand for the reading of God's word. Daniel chapter 12, verse 1, let's stand together as we always do, out of sheer respect and anticipation that God is speaking now. At that time shall arise Michael, the great prince, who has charge of your people. Now remember, this is the angel speaking to Daniel. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never has been since there was a nation, a nation of Israel, till that time, the time of the end. But at that time your people shall be delivered, everyone whose name shall be found written in the book. And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, and some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And those who are wise, they shall shine like the brightness of the sky above. And those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. But you, Daniel, shut up or close up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall increase. And then I, Daniel, looked, and behold, two others stood, one on this bank of the stream and one on that bank of the stream. And someone said to the man clothed in linen, this angel above the waters, who was above the waters of the stream, they said to him, how long shall it be till the end of these things, till the end of these wonders? And I heard the man clothed in linen, who was above the waters of the stream. He raised his right hand and his left hand toward heaven and swore by him who lives forever that it would be for a time, time. Y cuando and a se acabe la dispersión del poder del pueblo santo, of the power of the holy people comes to an end, all these things would be finished. Y yo oí, mas no entendí, heard, y dije, Señor mío, ¿cuál será el fin de estas said, cosas? Oh, my Lord, what shall be the outcome of these things? Y él respondió, anda, Daniel, Daniel, pues estas palabras están cerradas y selladas hasta el tiempo del fin. Muchos serán limpios y emblanquecidos y purificados. Los impíos procederán impíamente y ninguno de los impíos entenderá and none of the wicked shall understand, but those who are wise shall understand. And from the time that the regular burnt offering is taken away and the abomination that makes desolate is set up, that is the king Antiochus IV who desecrated the Jewish temple. From that time, there shall be 1,290 days. Blessed is he who waits and arrives at the 1,335 days. But you... Go your way till the end, and you shall rest, and shall stand in your allotted place at the end of the days. Oh God, I just pray that you will help us now to understand this better, and to see, and be comforted. Tener comportamiento God, be comforted by all of the peace por toda la paz that is represented in this chapter. In, in Jesus' name, en el nombre de amen. Jesus. amen. Now, when we come to chapter 12, Cuando Daniel is still 12, standing next Daniel to the Tigris River in this chapter. En este this is a, chapter 12 is a continuation of chapter 11. It's the same vision, we're just now at the end of it. 
Now, metaphorically, this river represents the history of humanity, and this river is flowing over and across many troubled waters through very heavy rapids. And, and Daniel is allowed to see that human history is going to get more and more turbulent as we get closer to the end that the angel is revealing. The man in white, who's already revealed what will happen at the time of the end in chapter 11, he sees Daniel's despair. And he sees Daniel's anxious heart. And like a parent who kind of figuratively takes his child by the chin, the angel takes Daniel and, and, he, and he looks at him and he says to Daniel, basically, Daniel, look at me. I know everything you've just seen in this, future, this vision of the future is overwhelming you. Listen to me now. You see, the angel's not standing in the turbulent waters, but instead he stands above the waters to show that he represents one whose power and purposes cannot be swept away by anything that humanity does. He stands above the water to show that God will provide what we need to keep going, persevering and living and hoping in God's purposes for our lives, for your life. When you think about it, whenever we open our Bibles, whenever we take time every day to get into God's Word and we open it, the same thing happens to us. It's as if God takes us by the chin and he pulls us in and he says, now listen, I know life is looking pretty crazy right now. It's as if God is saying, I know when you look at the world right now, it looks like it's out of control and God is saying, okay now, listen Look at me. Mírame, mírame. I've got you. Ya sé, te tengo a ti. Te and that's conozco. exactly what we're just seeing here es in this acá. passage. Here's what God promises to acá do. Es Dios One, he promises to save Dios all of his people forever. This is the only point. Es la única, es único punto this is the capítulo. gospel truth that the angel realidad. is giving to Daniel like a life raft of hope. El, Daniel, el, I know el as God has allowed you to get a, a glimpse of what's coming and all the suffering that's sabe, attached to it. God's plan of redemption and salvation Dios is perfectly in place. Es, la, and this hope, this life segunda, raft of hope is intended to give all future generations from Daniel's time until now and to the end to give us all this sense of hope going forward. And what follows in the rest of this chapter and the, the end of this book is a hope for all of us so that we can face life's trials. And many of you in this room are facing life's trials. You can face these without debilitating despair or fear. That's what this chapter is meant to do. Here's why we can do this. First, it's because our names are written in the book. That's what he says here. But at that time, the time at the end, people shall be delivered. Everyone whose name shall be found written in the book. God has a book. And we don't put our names in it. He does. And when God writes our names in this book, it is in permanent ink. Look what Jesus says to the Apostle John in the book of Revelation, chapter 3. Jesus says, the one who conquers will be clothed in white garments. And I, white garments, by the way, always represent righteousness. Will be clothed in, clothed in righteousness. And I will, Jesus says, I will never blot his name out of the book of life. I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. Now, when you look at that verse, Jesus is saying, the one who conquers will be made righteous. The one who conquers. The names of those who conquer. Jesus is talking about those who conquer unbelief and false belief and become believers. 
y que tran se transforman Jesus is saying, en when you move from that place Cuando of not believing in Jesus, no not surrendering Jesús, to Jesus, not trusting in Jesus for your righteousness and your salvation, when you move esto, from that place to repenting of your sin, de, putting de, your faith and trust in Jesus to save you, to deliver you, at the end, sanarte, your name is written in the salvarte, book. When you libro, move from that place of false de este lugar, belief, claiming to be a follower of Jesus or claiming falsa, to believe in Jesus, you know, like, hey, I get Jesus, I think he was alive, he was a Jesus, cool dude, sí, me and him were buds, you know, yeah, Jesus, he loves sí, me, I like el, him, lo amo, you know, and when you move from that nonsense, Sale de esa when you move from claiming to say I believe in Jesus but you're still living like an unbeliever when you get out of that deception and you come over here and you repent este of that deception and you say Jesus I'm a sinner I desperately need you to forgive me and save me from the judgment of that sin when you move from there to here your name is written in the book and Jesus says it will never be blotted out y nunca va a ser borrado. That's good news. Eso es una buena noticia. God will save his people. Él va a salvar a su gente. In the book, whose names are written. But secondly, en segundo lugar, where we get encouragement donde is that we will rise to everlasting life. Resucitaremos a la vida eterna, como dice en el verso 2. This is the clearest verse in the Old Testament that es teaches the resurrection claro of our physical bodies que habla at the de end. Nuestra resurrección de nuestro If you look cuerpo, at verse 2, it says, many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake and some to everlasting life, para vida eterna and some y otro para vergüenza to shame and everlasting contempt. Perpetua, perpetua. The angel is comforting Daniel el, el with the gospel truth that we know and we see in the New Testament. In 1 Corinthians 15, the Apostle Paul writes this to a church full of people just like you and me. He says, now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved, if you hold fast to the word I preached to you. In other words, if you persevere to the end, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, and then to the twelve, and then he appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Now, I love this encouragement of the Apostle Paul. What he's saying is, church, let me remind you of the most important thing in all of history. Jesus is alive. That's what Paul is saying here. He's writing to a church that's struggling under the weight of, of suffering and persecution. And he's saying, hey, let me remind you what you believe. Let me remind you why you are a child of God. Let me remind you of the most important thing that has ever, ever happened in the history of all humanity. The most important thing is that Jesus died and he is alive and he is still alive. And it's in that truth, gospel truth, where our comfort and peace and hope begins y ahí empieza a levantarse. I love that. Me encanta esto. He says hundreds of people saw him. Dice mucha gente lo vio. And Paul says most of them are still alive at y the muchos, writing of that passage. Mucha gente todavía está now, viva en el cielo. Now later in Paul Ahora continues bien. and he says, now if Christ si Cristo dice, is proclaimed Pablo, as raised si from the dead, how can some of you say that there's no resurrection of the dead? No But if there's no hope, si or if no there's no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not si been raised, then no our preaching is in vain, and your faith is in vain, and, and then those entonces, who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in Christ we have hope in this life only, we are of all people most to be I love Paul's honesty. I love it. He is saying, listen, if Jesus isn't alive, this is embarrassing. That's what he's saying. He's saying, we should be pitied among... If, if Jesus isn't alive, if, if there is no resurrection of Jesus, then we have no resurrection of Jesus. And that means all real hope dies, making us the most pitiful people of all. Well, that's honesty. He acknowledges that. If Jesus isn't alive, we're just crazy people. Right? 
But Paul refuses to Pero let Pablo our hope die. A dejar morir Listen to this. In Same chapter, 15, he says, Behold, dice, Mirad, I tell you a mystery. No we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. This is the coming of Jesus, the second coming. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall be changed. For this perishable body must put on the imperishable, and this mortal body must put on immortality. When the perishable puts on the imperishable and the mortal puts on immortality then shall come to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory wow. Paul is basically saying you know a lot of people believe they're going to live after they die but you ain't going to live unless you have some kind of supernatural power to make yourself immortal Usted puede hacerse you're no inmortal y like tener que tener algún, algún, algún poder sobrenatural de no ser polvo. No. no. It is something that has to happen to us. And Daniel's being comforted by the same truth that no matter what the persecution of God's people will bring, whether it be from suffering, to torture, to death, death will ultimately have no power over us. And Jesus, risen from the dead, is all the proof we need. Amen. That's all the proof we need. Now, there's even more good news. We're going to be saved eternally because our names are permanently written in the book of life. Our bodies are going to be raised from the grave, and then we will live in endless glory. I like this. In verse 3, the angel says to Daniel, those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the sky above. Now, to me, this moves us from the, just the simple length of our eternal life Esta with Jesus to the quality of our eternal life with Jesus. Let me explain. In Revelation chapter 22, some of you will remember that it says that Jesus is coming again and he's coming to deliver his people from the grave. And in that passage in Revelation 22, Jesus is referred to as the bright morning star. How many of you remember that name for Jesus, that title? He's the bright morning star. Now, when we were back in Daniel chapter 8, we also read the people of God who persevere to the end through, even through suffering and, 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 and persecution, should God take us through that, were referred to in Daniel chapter 8 as stars. Not like stars like we're famous no, no stars, como que but somos stars that are estrellas. bright, that are plentiful, Pero that bring light to the world. You Abundante are described usted. as a star es que es in Daniel chapter 8, en if you're a child of God. De Dios, si, de Daniel, and I love that because Dios. it helps us understand what Jesus said in Matthew 13. When Jesus comes again, Jesus said, at the end of the age, the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Don't you love that? The bright morning star who calls us stars says, if you are faithful to the end, when I come, you are going to shine like the sun. There's a whole lot of shining going on here. It's glorious. And I love what one commentator said. He said, everlasting life is not endless boredom, it's endless glory. God's people have and will suffer much in this mucho en este mundo world. Por el Even pecado. today, millions hoy, of Christians are being persecuted. But the good news is es que that we will rise from the dead to everlasting, glorious life. Now, Ahora, in case of any confusion, de confusion that I may be causing, let me, let me reconcile everything we just said with the resurrection of our bodies with Philippians 1.23 that tells us when God's people die, whenever a believer in Jesus Christ dies, Scripture tells us that our, soul, our souls go immediately to the presence of Jesus. We go right to heaven, right? To be absent in body, present with Jesus, Philippians 1. So every time a Christian dies, 
They wake up in the presence of Jesus. Their souls arrive in heaven, the eternal part of us. But when Jesus returns for the final deliverance and the final resurrection of his people, our bodies will be raised from the earth and our souls will be united with a brand new glorified body that is just like Jesus' body right now. Philippians 3, 21. So don't be confused. The angel in Daniel 12 is saying, Daniel, there's going to be a whole bunch of people in the rest of human history that think they're going to kill all of God's people and they're going to think they won. But guess what? They're all going to rise. And these old, worn out, crippled, paralyzed, diseased, decomposed bodies will come back to life with full heads of hair, <laughs> with perfect complexion, with perfect teeth, perfect eyesight, and perfect hearing, no bunions, no, con, no, no va a haber problemas, no va a haber callos, no, no va a haber no, arrugas, no artritis. No artritis. And that's just my list of things I'm excited about. Dice, Looking at you, your list is, is even lista longer. Trust me, I can, I can see you out here. Yo right? veo y veo como son. Problema, los que, see, que what's, what's meant here is se to offer us this incredible bucket of hope es tener este gran that de human history is not moving towards more advancement no and you know, longevity, it's moving towards está, more chaos and sin, and God knows that, mundo, and God's ready, and when God caos. intervenes y at his appointed Dios time, again, he's going to send nuevo, Jesus, y nuevo, y and if Jesús, we're already in heaven, cielo, Jesus is going to come, and we're going to come with him. And our bodies are going to raise up. That's going to look pretty creepy, right? Pretty freaky. But now we're going to raise up and have new bodies. Now, before I leave all that, and all the children aren't scared after I just said all that, I want you to notice that the angel is making a very clear contrast between the wise and the foolish. Look what it says here. It says in verse 2, and many of those who sleep in the dust. It says, the dust of the earth, they awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Both will sleep in the dust of the earth. That's a metaphor for physical death. The wise and the not wise, or the foolish. The wise will be resurrected to everlasting life and glory, but those who are not wise will also rise. But they will not rise to everlasting glory. They will rise to their own shame and contempt or disgrace. Now, despite what all atheists love to declare, the death of our physical bodies is not the end of our existence. You know what's interesting to me? Atheists are the only people on earth who believe that. The only people on earth who believe that when you go to the grave, you just turn to dust and that's it, you just cease to exist. No one else on earth believes that. Even people who aren't even that religious believe that there's something after this life. They may have made up all kinds of stuff, but they're thinking and they're hoping there's this life is all there is. And every single religion on the face of the earth believes that there's existence after this life. So these atheists that are running around proclaiming that, they're in a very, very small minority. Jesus confirms Jesus confirma esto, that the death of our body is not the end of our existence. No Listen to what he writes, or what he says. John chapter 5, do not marvel at this, for an hour is coming when all who are in their graves will hear his voice and come out. Those who have done good to the resurrection of life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of judgment. Jesus says, all Dice, who are in their graves. And at that point, there will be an eternally different outcome for those who are in God's book of life and those who aren't. Listen, church, this judgment time is real. And for those who have suffered at the hands of the wicked, and the good news is that God will make things right. He will vindicate the wise, the wise being those who have been made righteous through faith in the life, death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. 
they will be vindicated, they will be saved, and then he will eternally punish the evil. All those who have done evil to the resurrection of judgment. Now here's the problem with this verse, these words of Jesus. No one ever thinks they're evil. There's this massive judgment that's going to go on of all, human, all humanity in the end. Every single human who's ever lived is going to stand in judgment. And Jesus says in all of the scripture, the righteous will be saved, the evil will be judged, and damned for all eternity. And yet, no one ever thinks they're in the group that's called evil. I've never had one person my whole life come to me and say, you know, nadie vino, nadie en mi vida vino alguien me dice, oh, yo estoy, yo soy malo, yo just soy horrible. I've never had anyone do that. You probably haven't either. Has anyone ever just said, hi, my name is Joe, I'm evil. Malo. Now, there's a reason for that. Because most people don't do really evil things. Porque la mayoría de la gente no hace cosas malas en realidad. Lo que, ¿Qué es lo que define malo? Let me tell you something. Le voy a decir algo. The most evil thing la peor cosa in the universe el universo is unbelief. Es la falta de, la the most evil la thing cosa anybody que who's ever lived tener could ever do is to reject the sacrifice of God's son, the sinless one, el que or no the tuvo sinful one. And to mock that, and to ignore that, and to reject that, and to just pretend like it just doesn't matter. It's good for you, but it isn't good for me. There is no more evil, more evil than that. And you might think, geez, Steve, you're getting a little dramatic, aren't you? Well, Let's listen to Jesus. Revelation 20. We have a description of the judgment. Then another book was opened, which is the book of life. There's that book again. And the dead were judged by what was written in the books according to what they had done. And if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. Church, if anyone's name was not written in the book of life, that's unbelief. The only way your name can be kept out of the book of life is if you refuse to surrender and submit your faith and trust to Jesus Christ. The only way your name will not be in that book at the judgment is if you have decided you are going to take your chances and you are going to reject Jesus, ignore Jesus, and think, you know what, there's all these other ways, we're all going up to the same mountain, and when we all get up there, we'll all have our different names for God, and, 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 and Jesus says, there's only one name. One name under heaven and on earth by which we must be saved. Por el cual vamos a ser it's his name. Su nombre, Jesús. Is it any wonder the psalmist wrote, Por eso el only the fool dice, says in his heart, dice, el there is no dice God. En su corazón, no hay Dios. You see, for the wise, Pero los sabios, we turn to God's deliverer, de Jesus Dios. Christ. The one who says, believe in me, and you will live. But he also said, unless you repent, you too will perish. Now that's just the first three verses. Chapter 12. It ends even better. In verse 4, the angel looks at Daniel and says, Daniel, I want you to write all this down. Roll it up in the scroll, put a rubber band around it until the end, which would be hundreds of years, thousands of years after Daniel died. In verses 5 through 8, there are these two other angels standing on each side of the river, one on this bank, one on this bank. They look at the angel in the middle and they say, when is this all going to occur? And, and the angel in the middle, dressed in linen, answers them and and basically raises his hands and vows or swears by Almighty God who is in heaven. And he says, here's when it'll happen. After a time, 
times and a half time, and after the shattering of the power, the holy people comes to an end. And in verse 8, Daniel says, I don't have a clue what that means. I love Daniel. I love, I'm so grateful. He just looks at him and says, what? Daniel says, What's going to be the end of all this? And here's what the angel says in verses 9 through 11. He gently says, Daniel, we're done now. Go your way. He reminds Daniel, the wicked are going to increase. There will be no clue what's coming, referring to their judgment and condemnation. He says, though, but the wise will understand when they see us getting closer, when they see it coming. They will be prepared for what happens. The wise will. You see, people without understanding of the resurrection life that we've been talking about today will be devastated by all the persecution and suffering that's coming in the world, and that is right now in many places. But those who do understand this resurrection life, that it only comes through faith in the resurrected one, we will remember how faithful God has been to show us some of it and that he has promised to deliver us, deliver us eternally from all of the evil in this sin-broken world. Look at the last verse again, verse 13. The angel says for the second time, go your way, Daniel, the end, and you shall rest, and you shall stand in your allotted place at the end of the days. What an ending. It just ends right there. There's no more. Nothing said, nothing written. And I think God is saying to us today, listen, I've told you Canyon Hills people. I've told you what will come in times to come. No more details are needed. No more details are needed. I've let you see everything that you can possibly handle and understand for now. The matter is closed, and it is sealed until the end occurs. God is in control of this. And it's as if God is wanting to say to all of us today in 2021, now go live your life. Go about your business. Go about your ministry. Don't let the trials in this present day overwhelm your faith in God. It's as if God wants to say to you and me, keep loving me. Keep loving each other. Keep loving your neighbors. All in the certainty that God loves you. And he has promised to save every one of you whose names are written in his book. His plan for us at the end of all of this is that we'll stand in the place with Daniel, this place reserved for his people who have persevered faithfully. Our resting place is already ready. And at the last day, we will stand with all the saints beside, beside our Savior. When Jesus comes, we will come with him and we'll be with Daniel and our bodies will be resurrected and we'll be united forever and we're going to be standing next to Daniel when all of this happens. I think, I think every saint who's going to be in heaven is going to be around Daniel and Daniel's going to say, oh, now I know what he was talking about. And we're going to say, yeah. This is what he was talking about. Wow. So listen. We know that God knows the end. And until then, we are in heaven's care. So let me say to you again. Go your way today. Go your way with confidence and courage and joy. You are prepared now. You have all the details you need. For Jesus Christ has risen. He is alive and we will be too. Amen. 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 Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for walking with us through this wonderful book of prophecy. And I, I thank you and praise you that you have granted us the incredible privilege of seeing a little bit into the future as you have allowed us to. God, I pray the result will be that we will leave here with strength and confidence that we are in your care. 
that our names are written in your book forever. That no matter what no death importa, brings and how it will bring it about, o, o traiga, that we will rise levantar, and we will be glorified forever with por Amen. Lord, I pray for those who feel like they are in the fires of suffering and persecution even right now. That they would see you clearer than they've ever seen you. And that they would wrap their arms around you and persevere and endure to the very end. God, when we are scared, when we are overwhelmed by the chaos of humanity, God, when we open our Bibles, Cuando take us by the chin and let us see you again. De que verte de nuevo. In Jesus' name, en de Jesús. Amen. amen. Some of you de are not Christians. No son It's not that you hate God or that no, no you, you know, odia you're Dios burning nada, no. you know, crosses and putting swastikas up in your yard or anything stupid like that. You just have ignored it. Maybe you just rejected it or you just put it off and God has got a hold of your heart today and he is saying, today is the day. Today is your day. And if you want to move from that place of put this off for whatever reason to this is the God who's in control of it all and has done that for me. I'm going to repent of my sin and surrender my heart to him. If that's where you're at today, before you leave this room, you can walk up to any one of these people and say, I'm ready to take that step of faith. Whatever that means, I'm ready. Walk up to one of them and just say that. And they'll pray with you and help you take that step of faith. Some of you are just facing a tough week and you need someone to pray for you. Please, let us do that. That's an honor. Just walk up here and say, hey, it's going to be a tough one for us or my family or me. Pray for me. And if you're listening online and you are sensing, okay, I'm ready. I want to give my heart to Jesus Christ. You just text the name Jesus to that number, 56525, and you're giving us permission to text you back and say, let's talk. And we'll help you do that. All right, it's 4th of July. Go home, have fun, act like adults. If you blow off any parts of your body tonight, I'm not coming to visit you in the hospital. So grow up, God, man, grow up, have fun, enjoy, see you next Sunday. All right, God bless. Pero vayan y diviértanse y volvemos el domingo. Bendiciones.